So here today we have a Dengawa portable power pack. The symptoms are it's dead. When you plug in the charger, plugged in right there, it shows that the battery is at 0% and you can leave it plugged in overnight, all day long, and the battery never moves off 0%. Dead battery, right? Open and shut case. Dead battery. But the neighbor who owns this says he's already had it elsewhere and the expert told him the battery was okay. It's not the battery and they don't know what's wrong with it. So it shows up here. Well, let's find out what's wrong with it. So the first thing to do is to verify charge voltage. So we'll set our little meter to 20 volts DC. Turn it on. And put the positive probe right down the barrel. And just touch the negative probe there. 15 and a half volts, 15.44. That's 15 and a half volts right on the money. So we know we don't have a dead or weak charger. Okay, let's take it apart. So we'll start writing it down when we hit something different. These are the same length so far. Okay, that's it. They're all the same type, all the same size. So I didn't write them down. Now regarding the screwdriver, this is a Harbor Freight Pittsburgh. It's a very inexpensive screwdriver. Fit these screws perfectly. None of my cra Sears Craftsman screwdrivers fit those screws very well. But, but this Harbor Freight Cheapo fit it perfectly. So isn't that interesting? Now this is a Waya. I guess it's pronounced Vaya. This is a number one though. This is what I usually would use on something like this. But this doesn't fit very well either. So yeah, this is the winner today. comes apart. Oh. Well, there's our problem. We got a lithium a lithium battery pack. Okay, I've loosened the inverter board. I've got it just loose enough so that I could spin this input board and take a look at it. So this, this is positive and this is negative. This little tab right here. Observe the meter. There's our 15 volts coming in. Let's see if I can get this board completely out of here because figure out what this is doing. Okay, I have taken this all apart so that we can troubleshoot it. And I'll show you what I found. Now, the, what we're going to do is trace. We know that the charge voltage comes in here. We know it comes out this pin. And we're, we identified where it is on this connector. We're going to follow these wires and see why charge voltage is not making it to the battery. So to do that, you would have to set your meter on some sort of ohms scale. Now the problem with these inexpensive Harbor Freight meters, except for the very early ones that they sold 10 years ago or more, these that they've been selling for the last five or six years, DC volts works great, amps works great, you can use it as an amp meter, use it as a volt meter, works fine. 
However, the ohm scale doesn't work. So I'm going to put this on 200 ohms. Now, that just means over range. When I touch the probes together, it should go to zero. And that's better than most. It's gone to 24 ohms, 27 ohms, 20. Sometimes that'll be in the hundreds of ohms. You just can't trust it. And what you have to do is rock the function and range switch back and forth to try to get the ohm scale to kick in so you get a low ohms reading like that. Most of the time it won't go there and it's very unreliable. So don't try to use something like this to test continuity. You'll get nothing but false readings. But if, you, if this is all you have, make sure you get a low ohm. See, I'm touching the probes together here. Make sure you get a low ohms reading. And if you don't, the fix is to keep rocking this switch back and forth until it kicks in properly. So we're going to put this aside, and we, we'll use my fluke, which is back here. That's the best meter ever made, in my opinion. It's a fluke 12. They don't make these anymore. It's quite the shame. You'll find a lot of the old guys on YouTube have this meter, and they still use them. Okay, so... We have identified charge voltage. The positive is on this line, and the negative is on this line. We follow it, and it goes to this connector, this bottom connector right here. And I've already found, I found the negative. I'm not sure the camera's showing this, and I marked it with a black mark. And what you would do, I don't, see what, see if I can do this. I'm going to put the probe on the positive connector. First, we'll test our meter. So he goes to low ohms, three tenths of an ohm. That's the resistance of the test leads. So I'm going to touch, touch the positive. Then you go to this bottom connector. Of course, you follow this out by hand. See, and it works. We have continuity here. We'll do the same for ground. Second pin is working. Okay, so we know that we have continuity from here. And if we were to actually plug in our charger, we would measure the 15 volts right to here. So now it jumps from here to this connector. And we identified it. And right away, we begin to see a little copper and I show this in the camera. There's a little copper showing here. I don't know if you can see it. But okay, we want to find out if we this is connected to here because that's the next step in getting to the battery. So we'll unplug this cable and right away, we begin to see the problem. Let me disconnect the camera and bring you in close. And here's the connector that we disconnected. Burned. And here's the connector on, this is the display board. burned. There's pins 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 is completely missing. Pins 2, 3, 4 are blackened. They're not shiny. And the reason pin 5 is missing, it's stuck in there. And you notice that's the white wire, a sense wire, that goes right back to the top of the battery battery pack right here. And so that is why we're not charging. So why did this happen? Is this the result of component failure? Or are we looking at human error? There are two sockets here, the same size, the same color, 
would be very easy to mix up where the plugs go. And based on the writing on the circuit board, I'm thinking that this plug should have been in the other socket. And the other wiring harness should have been in this socket. Hard to say for sure. But before you take yours apart, put a witness mark across the plug and socket uh, to prevent you from making this kind of error. Uh, this is really very bad design to have plugs that could be inserted incorrectly with no witness mark and no color coordination to prevent someone from doing that. So I don't know if this is the result of human error or if this is component failure. Let's look at the battery. Let's see if we can find anything suspicious. And to do that, we're going to pull back these, this insulator. And the first thing I see is discoloration here, here. I see discoloration here. Okay, well, we got a new battery in the camera. I'm seeing discoloration here. That's one. So we got light green on this side and it's kind of charred here. Same thing here. Discoloration, then we go to the light green. So we got two suspects here. And we got a suspect here. And this one's actually oozing, the one on this end. So we have four suspects across the top. Now let's look at the other side. main suspect is this one right here. You can clearly see that that's kind of black right here. Also some oozing here as well. So there are 27 batteries in this battery pack. Five of them are suspicious. So these batteries are shorted or they're partially shorted. And that is what caused this connector. To burn. So to fix this power pack we would need a new connector here. That's fairly easy to replace. We would need a new connector here. That's not quite so easy to replace because all these wires would have to be re-soldered. Well it's not really a bad job if it came with a wiring harness. And we would need a new battery pack because even if you took this all apart, even if you had the tools to re-weld all these, all this assembly back together, if five batteries have failed, five cells have failed, then 27, you got 22 more to fail. So yeah, new battery pack needed, new wiring harness needed, new connector needed. Now if you did all that, would it work again? Now what about a, a MacGyver fix? We have to have this working right away today. Could we extract the pin from here? Pretty sure we could. Could we replace the burned pin on this side? How would we do that? Could replace that missing pin with a common pin like a dressmaker's pin? Some sort of steel pin sticking up through there? Could we get this thing to work again? Yeah, but it wouldn't last very long. It might might take some sort of a charge, but, but we already know it's defective, so it's not going to last very long. So even though you probably could do this, and I have done things like this in the past, it, it doesn't make any sense unless you had a brand new battery pack to put in it. So that's the situation here with your Dengawa. And it's a shame. It's a real shame because this came apart right away. Here's the remaining, here's the cabinetry. It's extremely, the build quality is great. 
The solder work is terrific. Like, look at how shiny these joints are on the connectors. Most of the time you get this cheap stuff and it's dull, not shiny like that. The plastic is the right thickness. The, everything screws down. The screws are all accessible. It comes right apart. It's made to be taken apart and repaired and put back together. I, it's very attractive. Whoever designed this did a great job of designing it from a service point of view. I, it is a shame. So, uh, will I try replacing that pin to see what happens? Maybe, but without a new battery pack, without a new harness, without a new connector, there's no way to make this right. So that's what's wrong with your Dengawa. I wish there were a cheap, cost-effective solution, but in this case, there there isn't. So that's the story. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps someone.